So I just moved to Portland uh, about two months ago. So I'm new here and uh, I'm looking forward to kind of getting to know you guys and the local community. Uh, and you know, it's, it's funny, I moved from Dallas, Texas and I lived there most of my life. I also lived in Chicago and Miami, but um, when I moved here, I just completely felt at home for the first time in my life. I never really loved where I lived before. So thank you for having an awesome city. I love it here. <laughs> what? Thank you. Who said that? I didn't see. Oh, way back there. I'm looking way in the wrong direction. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, you guys are doing, you guys are doing work that matters. Would, would all of you agree with that statement? I love the theme of this year's, of this year's uh, of WordCamp. How many of you agree with that statement? You're doing work that matters. Okay. I see a few hands that aren't raised, either maybe you're not paying attention, or <laughs> you, um, maybe you're just doing it as a job. And uh, hopefully we can find ways to get you more inspired, to think through what you're doing, and uh, make it work that matters. But my job over the next 45 minutes is to kind of give you an idea of how you can get an audience for the work that you're doing, and how you can reach people online more effectively. So here's the deal and the promise that I want you guys to make to me. Uh, the next 45 minutes is all about you. This is not my soapbox to get up here and talk. This is about you. So I know it's after lunch. I know there have been multiple beers consumed. <laughs> Mr. Louis. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's I need your your engagement, right? So uh, if you have something to say, a question, uh, something to add to what I'm saying, shout it out. This is probably the only time that you're ever going to stand in, or sit in a chapel and be able to be rowdy and shout things out and laugh and have a good time. So you guys ready to have a good time? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing work that matters. Now that we've established that this is all about you, let's talk about me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so um, this is the part I freaking hate. I hate standing up here and talking about myself and telling you why I'm even up here and promoting myself, but that is probably the first thing that anyone doing anything online and trying to get an audience for it has to learn. How many of you hate the th same thing I hate? Yeah, it is uncomfortable. I don't like talking about myself. I don't like promoting myself. But it is so, so important because when, like, nobody's going to do it for you, right? The person sitting next to you until you are doing work that matters, until you have an audience, until people get to know you and why you're doing work that they should pay attention to, they're not going to do it for you. So you have to do it yourself. We have to wear multiple hats uh, with anything we do online. I just want to get a quick, I'm going to talk about myself here in a second, but I'm going to get a quick, uh, like how many of you are um, doing any kind of blog, like you're, you're blogging, you're not just doing um, maybe a, a work website. So blogging, podcasting, video, Okay, so a good majority of you. And then how many of you are doing it as your job? Like you're, you're doing your programming, developing, all that stuff. Okay, good mixture. Cool. Okay, so I am Larry Petrucci. Um, I do two things online. I have a content website called Geeks Life where we do how-tos and reviews on all sorts of topics like... Uh, technology and gaming and entertainment and um, food because I just wanted to talk about bacon. How can you blame me, right? Um, so um, I've been doing podcasting video uh, shows online since 2005. Um, I was one of the first people to ever do, you know, podcasting, video podcasting. Uh, you remember when Steve Jobs first came out with that video iPod? Did, how many of you remember that? Okay. So when that happened, 
I was like, oh, that's really cool. People are going to need something for that. So I started doing videos, and I've been doing it as my full-time job for 10 years. Very, very lucky. Um, in the process, I've built up over 2 million social media followers. Um, and more importantly than the 2 million social media followers, I've built an awesome community. Uh, a couple of you in here, at least, right? <laughs> you, you came up to me. Where are you? You came up to me before. <laughs> um, and, you know, that that is the most important thing to me about who I am and what I've done is the community that we've built. Uh, because of um, the, the 10 years that I've been working at this, I've been invited to speak on stage with Norm MacDonald, Penn Jillette, Adam Carolla, uh, Chris Angel, Tom Green. Um, and I've also been invited to speak at TEDx. And I've worked with Samsung and OnStar and AT&T and Panasonic, Bausch & Lomb, all these um, great companies, this great experience that have been able to build up over the, the years. Um, the other thing that uh, I do is Geeks University. We are about to launch in a couple of months, actually. We just set the date, so we better stick to it. <laughs> uh, day after Christmas, we're launching uh, Geeks University, where we teach people how to create amazing videos and, um, and get, get an online audience. So really excited about that. Marketing 101. You guys are here to figure out how to get an audience for your your content, whatever it is you're doing online. I'm going to tell you a little secret. What does marketing start with? Well, it starts with great content. So, you know, marketing starts with, with the content. You have to have something worth marketing, worth getting the word out, worth getting an audience to. Without it, you, you have nothing, right? So, I want you to get rid of the word marketing. That is the title of this presentation, but it is not the most important thing. When you market, when you have the mentality of, I've got to market, I've got to market, I've got to market, you lose sight of who you're trying to get to your site. You, you lose sight of the people themselves, and that is the most important thing. Everything you do from your message, from uh, the content itself, to the end goal, whatever your end goal is, um, it is about people at its heart. So get rid of the word marketing in your head and think more engagement plan. All right, so we're going to go back to basics here and look at what really matters, which is the content. Content is king. Have, how many of you have actually heard that term, okay. It's, it's used quite a bit, let's be honest. Content is king, content is king. And it's used so much that a lot of people actually forget what it actually means. So Bill Gates, in 1996, wrote an article um, that was published on Microsoft.com. And the article was entitled, Content is King. In that uh, article, he said this, content is where I expect much of the real money will be made on the internet, just as it was in broadcasting. So if you think about that, and if you think about where this whole concept really came from, it's about, you know, it's about the content that you're building and the goal, how many of you want to make money? Oh, come on, be honest. You want to make money. <laughs> Um, you know, so, so that's the end goal, and so how do you create the content that's worth marketing that will help you get to that point? Number one, be passionate. So this kind of sounds like it goes without saying, be passionate. Uh, how many do you feel like you're truly passionate about what you do? So some people don't, and that's totally okay because that's life. We get into things that we're doing um, that we don't truly feel passionate about. Maybe we have a skill that we don't really love doing, but hey, we're good at it and it makes us money. Hopefully you can find ways that you, know, you're, that you can find something that at least that you're in, that, that you're good at something, 
but you find things that, you're, that you actually like doing and you build on top of that. And when you're thinking about what you're doing, and um, I've actually talked to a couple of people here who are in the process of making some changes to what they're doing, and that's why they're here at WordCamp. So I'm going to speak to those of you who, who might be changing or thinking about starting or anything like that. When... <laughs> When you think about what you're doing, I can't tell you how many conversations I've heard that go something like this. Hey, Luria, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a website. I'm really excited. I'm super excited to get started. This is me. Great. What's your website going to be about? Uh, you know, what I was thinking works online is cats. So I'm going to do a website about cats. And I say, really? That's awesome. What's your cat's name? <laughs> I don't have a cat. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually going to go down to the shelter later today. I'm going to go get a cat. And I am going to do videos and blog about how awesome cats are. sound like a good idea to you. <laughs> no. Do not talk about something you don't, or you're not passionate about, or at least you don't know in and out, right? That is your number one goal. And number two, you've got to be committed. This stuff is hard. How many of you find this like super easy and you have never hit a hard spot in your life? What, the whole room? N nobody? Not one single person? This stuff is hard. Oh, <laughs> you are a winner there. <laughs> but you know, this, uh, like, you will hit hard times. You will hit times where you're like, I, why am I doing this? You've got to be committed. So number one, number two, sorry, I don't know my numbers. You've got to say to yourself, commit to yourself internally and commit to a friend, commit to the world, however you want to do it. If you want to send a tweet out and say, I'm committed to doing this and I'm committed to doing it till the end, that must be in your process. Because when you're not committed, you will stop. And how many of you have gone to a website that hasn't been updated in a year? Everybody stops. Everybody loses sight of why they're doing it. They stop being committed, and they stop doing what they set out to do. Do you want to be one of those people? That's what I thought. Number three, be authentic. Authentism. This is like something everybody talks about, right? How many times have you heard, be authentic, be authentic? This is something I want to dive deep into today because um, I've learned a lot over the years about being authentic. So people want to follow people. And you must, in order to have a brand, in order to have content, um, when you're building your content, you've got to be authentic with it and with your brand because people want to follow people. Do you follow Coca-Cola? Does anybody follow Coca-Cola on social media? Right. They don't want to follow that. They want to follow people. So you need to be real, honest, and raw. So let's, let's think about that a little bit. Who knows Simon Sinek? Not personally. <laughs> I wish I knew him personally. Um, <laughs> now, Simon Sinek is, if, so most of you did not hold up your, um, your hands. So I want, you have homework today. Go watch uh, later today a TED video from Simon Sinek. He did a TED speech about, um, about why people follow you. He says they don't follow um, what you do. They follow why you do it. And in that speech, he said, if you talk about what you believe, you will attract people who believe what you believe. Now, this is really important, like so important. 
How many of you want everyone to watch what you're doing? Really, let's be honest. How many of you want everyone to watch what you're doing? <laughs> Only a few hands went up, so maybe this is a room full of uh, wisdom because most people start out thinking, I want everybody to see this. I'm going to show the world what I can do. And you know what? That's not the best way to go about it because you are not for everyone. What you believe, the work that you're doing, isn't going to be attractive to so many people out there, and that's okay, and we have to be okay as a brand owner, because what you're doing is a brand, make no mistake about it. You have to be okay with just saying, I'm gonna attract the people that believe what I believe. And you know what? You're gonna have such a happier audience. You're gonna have such a happier mentality day in and day out when you're attracting the people who believe what you believe because then you don't get the stupid YouTube comments or comments on your website that say, you suck. I've gotten a million of those. <laughs> but you know, I mean, that's, that's part of this online world, right? but you attract people who believe what you believe and you set out with that goal and you don't care about the numbers. I hate this whole mentality. I know I put it up there. I have two million social media followers. I freaking hate that mentality. It is not about the numbers. It is about who your audience is, whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, Kimra Luna, probably most of you don't know. Does anybody know who she is? Oh, wow, awesome, okay. So I recently discovered her. Um, she is a fantastic example of being authentic. When she started out, she went, um, she said, you know what, I'm on welfare and I've gotta do something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about what I know. And she started and you know what she was met with? <clears throat> no, 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 camera. Color of your hair, not gonna work. Cover up those tattoos. You can't see the tattoos in this picture, but she has a lot of tattoos, which is nothing new for Portland, right? But for most of the world, it is. And she said, you know what? I'm being told that I'm just not gonna be taken seriously, but I think that if I'm just who I am, and I think that if I just talk about what I want or what I know and what I'm passionate about, people are gonna see through that and see that it's good. And hopefully they'll trust me. And she went from welfare to a million dollar business in one year. She's a perfect example of being authentic. Now here's where I get a bit personal. So I wish that I had the guts to follow Kimmer Luna's example. She wasn't doing it at the time, but have the same mentality when I first got started 10 years ago. I started out going by the name Callie Lewis. And what happened was, so when I first started, I was told pretty much the same thing. I didn't have blue hair or tattoos, but I had a name. How many, how many of you looked at my name today and you were like, whoa, I don't even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> That's what I got. I've been constantly met with that. I love my name. It's Italian. It's, it's a beautiful name, if I may say so myself. But... Um, I love the name, but what happened when I first got started was I was told, your name, Luria Petrucci, it's not going to work. It's too hard to pronounce. It's too hard to spell. It's not going to be a good brand. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this new name, Callie Lewis, and we're going to pick apart who Luria is, pull all the nice little pieces of who the good part of Luria and put her into Callie. So Callie was me, I was always authentic. But it wasn't all of me. And so what happened over the years, it worked. Callie was this perfect personality. And over the years, I became aware that I was in a box. I couldn't grow, I couldn't be true to who I was. I even went so far to keep this perfect personality. I wouldn't 
be dare seen or taken a picture with a drink in my hands. Heck, I'm Italian. I've been drinking since I was three years old. <laughs> but no, no drink in my hands ever will you find that online if you search Callie Lewis. And I wouldn't say a cuss word. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. I had to protect this image of who Callie was because it was the best of. Now, I did a TED Talk earlier this year, TEDx, sorry, <laughs> total difference, um, where I discussed the process that I had gone through and the um, controlling relationships I'd been in, the, ment the emotional, uh, mental abuse that I'd, that I'd lived for my entire life and, and part of the reason that that happened in the first place. And that was so hard. It was interesting because Callie is so perfect, right? And I had been, I, I always was, was right on. Everything I did publicly was right on. And then I get up on that TEDx speech or stage and I could barely get through that speech. It was one of the hardest things I'd ever done because I was bearing all. For the first time in my online persona history, I was bearing everything I had to give. And I was telling the truth, which I really hadn't done as Callie. And so, you know, that's um, what I learned from that was that it is so important to be truly authentic. Like, you may not be choosing to go by a different name and going down the same path I did, but so often in all of our experiences online, we are told, this isn't going to work about what you're doing. This isn't going to do it. So you change. And it may be not minute, it may be slight, but over time that builds. And it is so important that you always stick to that authentic person. Who are you? What is your brand? And it may not be you as a person that's out there, but there is a person or people behind that company, and you need to stick to that authentic personality behind it. Because again, remember, people want to follow people, and you want to follow that human element. And you know what's interesting is, as Callie, um, people would come up to me and they were like, hey, I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. You're fantastic. I love watching you every day. You're part of my family. And that, that, was, and that was great. I mean, how many of you want that, right? That's, that's awesome. But as Luria, this is weird talking about myself. Um, but as Luria, people would come up to me and say, you know what? You helped me through a struggle. You, um, by being you, by telling all, by being who you are online and all of it, flaws and all, you did something for me and that, and that made an impact on me. And what I realized is that people value that realness, that rawness. I had preached it, but then I experienced it. So use my example, use my uh, mistakes to better your progress online. All right. <laughs> Now we're gonna get away from that. <laughs> Number four, be original. So uh, everybody, that's saying that like there's nothing original online except your, or there's nothing original in, in any writing of any kind. It's all been said, it's all been done. Um, but there is your perspective and that's what's original and that's what you can latch on to instead of going on um, writing a blog post or presenting your brand and, and it's the same thing that other people have said, using the same terminology, the same phrasing. Find ways to be original and find ways to present your thought about it. It does take more effort. It takes more time and it takes more effort, but I guarantee you will find more success if you, for example, write a blog post that takes you a week to write because you're trying to find that original element Hopefully it doesn't take you that long, but um, versus 20 minutes out the door and up just to have content that's, that you're putting out there. That's never the better way. Be consistent. Um, consistency is so, 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 so key in your online brand. You have to be consistent with a couple of different things. 
First of all, your message. There we go. Um, your message. Who are you? What do you represent? What is your brand about? Karanda is a perfect example. You heard, you're all here for her uh, speech earlier, right? She did great. And she is fantastic at putting out the message. She's consistent with her message. When you go to her website, Carvel Digital, you learn how to make your website more effective in five minutes. Okay. <laughs> I understand what I'm gonna get from you. I understand what I'm doing here. If it's not for me, bye. If it is, awesome. Be consistent with your, your message, not only on your website, but also on your social uh, platforms, when you're talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. There's a, the whole elevator pitch exists for a reason. Come up with it, you know, make, make an effort to, to drill down what your message is. And I've gone through this whole practice recently, again, um, with, with Geeks University, and it reminded me how important your message is because you have to make sure that people among all the noise are seeing, um, are seeing what you are at a, at a glance. And also be consistent with your uh, delivery. So when you decide how often you're presenting content, whether that's on your website, whether that's on social, you need to have a consistent delivery schedule. And there are two camps of thought here. One says, um, make sure that you're sending your stuff out every Monday, the same time, right? The same time of every week, of every month. So every Monday you get the, the content that you're expecting. And the other camp says, surprise them. Uh, keep them on their toes, <laughs> if you will. And these days, with so many people out there doing what essentially you're doing, because we all are trying to get the attention of the world, uh, you need to be consistent with that delivery schedule. But bring in this other camp and surprise them with some extras some unexpected things to keep them on their toes and keep looking out for you. Chris Lima, is it Lima or Lemma? <laughs> um, Chris is a great example of this. He puts out uh, something every day. That is his you know, delivery schedule. Now, I would not suggest if you're just starting out or if you're just kind of ramping up things, do not start out with a daily schedule. Uh, we were talking uh, just yesterday, and he didn't start out that way. He ramped up to it. So be sure you're not kind of setting your expectations too, uh, too much too soon. Because if you have another life, if you have a family, if you have a job, if you have a dog, any other obligations in life, uh, you will fail if you try and do every day right off the bat. So community, um, now that we have a base for the content that you're creating, let's talk about the community. And this is where it, you're able to really drive people back to the basics of your content. Number one, engage. With your community, how many of you actually spend time engaging with your audience? I know you do, Chris. <laughs> wow. So, so many people are not raising their hands. Engagement is super, super key. It doesn't matter what kind of content that you're putting out there. Engagement must be a part of your plan of action. Um, so Marie Forleo, a lot of you may not know her as well, but she's a great example of this. She has a huge community, and her community is mostly on her website, but she's in there, she's commenting back. She gets hundreds of comments on a single post, but she's spending the time to go in and say thank you or great job or whatever. It does not have to be a ton of you. It, it does take a lot of time to engage, but... You don't have to like write a paragraph or a novel for each comment that you, that you give back to people. But again, it goes back to the authenticity. People want to follow humans. And when you engage with them, 
that makes it more, that makes a more loyal audience and it makes it more possible for them or more, um, it causes them to want to come back to your website or want to keep looking at your content, your tweets or whatever. And number two, be authentic. And yes, I'm going to hit this home again because on the content, on the brand side, that is, uh, we, we talked in, in depth about that. On the social side, you need to remember that that's the same thing. So a lot of people make the mistake of sending out, sending out, sending out. And just like I told you at the beginning of this, this is not my soapbox. This is about you. That's what you need to go into your engagement plan with your trying your attempt to get people to your site to pay attention to what you're doing um, you need to remember that one thing be authentic and allow yourself to bear all so there is there are two sides of you <laughs> to everybody there's the content side of you and you're pushing out those blog posts the content whatever kind of of uh, you know links that you're sending out that you have created that your brand is about so you're sending that out that's great awesome you're engaging over there and then there's this other side to you the real you the person that may have an insecurity the person that has a dog the real you, the human you, and that needs to be out there as well. So you need to put both of them out there at the same time. I mean, for goodness sakes, when I publish stupid photos, stupid, um, you know, I say stupid, but they're just silly, right? They're, I found the smallest oyster I had ever seen. I don't eat a lot of oysters, but I was intrigued by it, and I said it. And, you know, those things get the most engagement, the most plus ones, the most comments, the most everything. Um, so be sure that you don't get so caught up, and I am so guilty of this time and time again, of getting caught up in what you're doing that you forget to be you, <laughs> and that you forget to share that part of you with your audience. because. Every time you publish something like that, that's just silly, behind the scenes, essentially. People love behind the scenes. And that's what that is. I mean, that's just behind the scenes of my brand. That causes them to want to look out for more from you. And then they'll actually see your content posts. Provide value. God, value is <laughs> so important. I guess everything I'm talking about here is important. Um, but value. And value comes in many different ways. Um, and you can provide values in, in, in many different ways. Um, it depends on what your audience is. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what your goal is in terms of how you provide value. If, you're, um, if your audience is looking for just some entertainment, that's value. Um, if you uh, are actually providing content, that's value. But remember this, if you live your life as if everything is about you, you will be left with just that, just you. So make sure that when you're getting the word out and trying to drive people back to you, the value does not come from just you. You provide value, but you also go over here and you say, you know what, what am I paying attention to? What am I enjoying and what's providing value to me? Share that with your audience as well. It doesn't all have to come from you. Hashtags. This is a great way that you can provide value. How many of you heard, have heard this tip before? How many of you actually use it? OK. So I always think everybody knows this. And then I realize when I'm talking to people, there are a lot of you who have not actually heard it. This is, so, this is a great tip for getting out there and getting the word out about you. And it goes hand in hand with providing value, which we just talked about. You follow a hashtag, um, not your own that you've created, but you follow a hashtag that you are, that's popular, that has, you know, is in your same circle, and that has a lot of engagement already, a lot of questions, a lot of answers, a lot of all this stuff, conversation. And you go, you find somebody who is wanting information, asking questions, and you provide value for value's sake, you answer the question having to do with your expertise or your brand, but you don't pitch your brand. You just provide value. And this is a long-term plan. 
but it works and it starts to get the, your name out there. And then ask questions. This is a fun one. And so many people don't do it. So many people state, make statements, and they never ask their audience what they think. Um, Dale Carnegie, I mean, come on. Talk to somebody about themselves and they will listen for hours. That is like human nature, right? Everybody loves talking about themselves. Even if you don't think you like talking about yourselves, even if you think that you're shy, like I am. I don't look shy, do I? Um, but you, you, all, you, want, you want something let out about you. So ask them the right questions. When you talk about your content, when you talk about yourself, talk about, allow them to talk about themselves as well. Be willing to fail. How many of you have failed in life? <sighs> I love failure. I say that with a huge smile. I love failure. How many of you love failure? <laughs> so many hands did not go up right then. Failure sucks. But it's so important. It's so key. You must be willing to fail with whatever you're doing. All these tips I'm giving you, all this stuff that I'm saying to do, it's not the end all be all. If you're sitting there thinking, you know what, I wonder if this would work. We live, like this, this world is new. There is so much room to improve. You must be willing to try things because what I know what works may be different in slight ways to what works for your audience. So imag like em embrace that, that word, failure, and try new things. And just put it all out there because, again, you learn from failure. You learn what works, what doesn't. And it's not that big of a deal if you do fail. It really isn't. That is like the hardest thing for most of us to learn in life. <laughs> and it drives right back into our businesses. So the big question I get asked when I talk about uh, getting the word out and engagement and all of that is, which social networks should I choose? Uh, I hate this question because so many people out there will say, be everywhere. You've got to be everywhere, be everywhere, be everywhere. There's Pinterest, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Google Plus. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What do you do? How many of you are trying to be everywhere? No? Fantastic. Oh, I saw one. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad that you already have this in your brain because you cannot be everywhere. So you, you, I'm going to run through this since many of you are already there, but you need to find what works for you and your business and stick to that. Try new things like Periscope. Periscope is actually a great thing. How many of you are using Periscope? Not many. So Periscope is a great way to test and use all of these theories that I've provided to you today. Um, because you can get the engagement, you can ask people questions, you can call out their name, you can get them really engaged and provide a behind the scenes look at whatever it is you're doing, and it works. <laughs> now, personally, I love Facebook video more because um, of how it's integrated into Facebook, but that's not really out there yet, but pay attention to it, I'm hoping that they release that to more and more. I've been using that on a consistent basis, and it's awesome. So as, you, as Facebook allows that to kind of get out of beta, pay attention to that as well. Um, <laughs> how many of you have an email list? How many of you don't have an email list? Uh, OK. You need an email list. Do not underestimate the power of an email list. You know, it's funny. It sounds so old school, does it not? I mean, that is like you hear email and you're like, mailing list? Really? That's like 1990. But it works. And you know why it works? It's because social is really hit or miss. I may have 2 million social media followers, but who cares? Because not 2 million people are paying attention at the very moment that I publish that piece of content. It really doesn't matter. I shouldn't say that out loud, should I? Um, <laughs> But that, that is so hit or miss in social, and there are things that you can do, and there are ways around it by posting the same thing over and over and over. But 
uh, everybody has an email address, right? So find ways, and that's one of the things that we're teaching at Geeks University because it's so key is, is find, you know, you've got to start that list and you've got to start building it and you've got to use that as your, um, as part of your plan, your, your, um, I'm trying not to use the word marketing, your marketing plan, but you know, your engagement plan. All right, so I hope I've provided value to you guys today. Um, I am Laurie Petrucci, and you guys can go to geeksuniversity.com slash WordCamp um, if you're interested in learning how to uh, you know, make awesome videos, uh, make those amazing and effective for your business, and uh, get an audience. So thank you guys so much. Okay. Yeah, we have some time if anybody wants questions. Any questions for her? What did I tell you at the beginning? Oh. This isn't on? Can you uh, unmute the mic up there for her? <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, I said it engaged today, didn't I? Any questions? Did I do that good of a job? Awesome one. <laughs> Run to the back. Oh, hey, Rich. Hi, hi Ed. Uh, you, talk, you just talked about Facebook video. Uh, what do you. What, what I mean, is it? You're not, well, you're not talking about just po uh, uploading um, the video. Correct. Can so you face explain a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Facebook Mentions um, is an app that actually only like verified profiles can, can access. Um, but they're allowing live streaming of video just like Periscope does. Uh, did, did I skim, skim over that? Like, does everybody know what Periscope is? No, okay, so Periscope is live streaming video. So I get on my phone, which is being held hostage down there because I love my phone. Um, <laughs> I get on my phone and I say, go live, and anywhere I am, whatever I'm doing, I can share that with the world and people can see it live, they can comment live. So how many of you have watched like a live stream, like produced live stream? Okay, so it's the same idea except mobile. Does that help? And then Facebook mentions Facebook Live Video is the same thing on their platform and it's really like highly integrated into the Facebook platform. Mm -hmm. Good time for just a one more, one, maybe two quick questions. Granda. Oh, back here. Uh oh, um, thanks for the for the shout out. <laughs> Anyway, um, I wanted to ask you more about email. Like, if someone is like thinking about doing that and they have no list whatsoever and they're starting from zero, what do you recommend, Mr. Email List? Do you want to answer that? So this is David. <laughs> we work together, um, and uh, he he's he's our expert at, at that kind of thing. Well, like any time I start a new website or whatever, like if I do it for a client or whatever, we make sure that it's there's a clear call to action somewhere on the site to, to sign up to get updates or even blog posts because a lot of blogs will have an RSS feed and so they can put in their email or whatever and then get that as new content's put out, it gets emailed to them. So, and with Facebook these days, the, the, the uh, cost of running ads is really low so you can really build an email as fast. I mean, we built, we're up to like 8,000 in a couple weeks, so. And the other thing I would say is, so have that clear call to action, but also um, instead of saying, hey, join my email list, because that's exciting. Like, nobody wants to join your freaking email list. So you have to find ways to, to accomplish that. Provide them with something for doing that. Like um, you could do a simple um, PDF of, um, you know, an e you could say, hey, we've got this great free ebook or whatever that has to do with tying into the why you're pa they're paying attention to you in the first place. Give them a freebie for doing so. Or, um, create, you know, hey, I'm going to give you a special link to a live stream that I'm doing or to this blog post that I've created just for you. Give them something because that's human nature, right? Like, do you want to go join somebody's email list just to get spam? 
<laughs> and then that's the other thing. When you have an email list, do not spam them. Make sure you're providing value. You go back to the whole providing value thing and make sure that you are giving them something for being on that list. All right, let's give her something and give her an applause for her great <laughs> presentation.